Yo, it's the Grow Green Podcast. Hold another fat one, puffing on that first class green. Take another puff, puff, hey. Drift in the clouds up, up and away. Hear all about cannabis horticulture, plus cultivation, news and entertainment. Not forgetting that the cute Dalmatian. Grow Green is so amazing. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Hi out there, this is the Grow Green Podcast, episode number 23, CJ Stoned here. How's it going out there guys? CJ Stoned and Eric Weed here with the Grow Green Podcast, okay? Number 23. Number 23 right? guys. Number 23. We're going to do it talking a little about um, flushing, cleaning out your... Man, that's some really nice looking, some nice looking dabs we got over there. Anyway, distractions. Um, flushing out them flushing salts, and, you, all uh, you salt users. Flushing out the salts. Uh, we're not gonna go super deep. We're not gonna dive too deep. Talk on about it. a few products. We'll talk maybe. about a few products. Talk about uh, just touch on the storage drying. We went over this a little bit before, but we're gonna go a little bit more in depth this time. Dive a little bit off the medium end. I see you got some shatter going on over there. Yeah, that was that uh, black mamba. Oh, that's the black mamba. Yeah. Cheers to the black mamba. Cheers, friends. I'm going to start my day off with a little bit of that. I haven't had a dab yet today. This guy uh, has already had several, making me a little jealous. So That's what we do. Let's get it going. So, yeah. First off, you know, so if you are in the stages of flushing, you're probably, depending on what kind of plant you're at, you know, the, uh, week eight or nine. Week eight or nine, getting ready to, you're seeing on that chart. Your nutrients are getting smaller and smaller feed time if you're following a chart. Getting ready to start flushing. And a lot of times I get asked, what do I use to flush? Can I use just water? What do I do? I need to use a you can special just use thing? Water. You know? Sometimes it's not enough to get everything out, though. What happens is, is when you're feeding with a bottle, not necessarily an organic, but when you're feeding bottle nutrients or salts or synthetics and stuff like that, you get a buildup in the media. And then... You have to add something else in to help break those loose so that you can flush them out with water. And there's a few different things to do that. What do you usually use? Well, before I dive into the products I use to help flush some salts out, why would I want to do that in the first place? Why not just keep feeding, 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 feed, chop? What's well, that, is that, what's that going to do? So the difference is... is you're going to have a buildup of nutrients in your plant if you don't get it out of the soil. So you're going to taste that shit is what you're telling me. Right. No. The biggest way to see and to know if your plant's getting flushed or it was flushed right, uh, at least if you're the grower, obviously sometimes when you're the um, consumer or the um, patient at the end, the end user either way, you will not necessarily see it, but you can definitely taste the difference. So sometimes it'll be a little bit... Um, sour or perfumey or you know if you just don't know what the nutrient flavor is you might even just think that's part of the weed but a lot of the times it's not cannabis usually doesn't taste perfumey unless you don't have all the nutrients flushed out so when it's flushing out you can tell by the look of the plant as the grower it'll be turning a different shade of yellow first and then Sometimes pinks, purples, greens, blues, you never know, all kinds of different colors, fall colors essentially. And that's just showing, the plant showing that, hey, I, I'm starting to run out of the availability of the nutrients there and I'm starting to flush all of this stuff out of my system and use all of it up so that now I'm going to be getting deficient and those are signs of deficiency, but that's essentially what you want for flushing your plants out. So. If this whole time you guys have been harvesting plants and they're still real bright green, probably a no-no. Probably aren't flushing them out all the way. And uh, it probably, if you think that the cannabis tastes good now, oh boy, you could probably mm. taste way better. Yeah, so, get them salts out of there. That's the biggest reason you want to flush it out. Just try to get um, everything out nice, clean, uh, nice, very... Uh, you'll get more of the fruits, the aromas, the actual natural cannabis flavors, and not so much the buildup of heavy metal salts, nutrients, and stuff like that that you're actually tasting when you're smoking it. Or even sometimes it'll carry over into the extracting. So that's a big no-no in my book when it comes to connoisseur types of cannabis or hash or anything like that. So the biggest thing is get it all out, get the fade, clean, end result. 
better overall taste. So bless your shit. One of my favorite products that I sort of recently discovered is a SLF 100 called. It's called a submerged liquid fermentation. You it's got a that over there? yeah. It's enzymes here. Let's see. There she is. My favorite. I actually use that all the time. I feed every time with that at a smaller dosage, just so that it helps break up the salts. I got a guide <coughs> here. Since I'm no scientist, tell us a little bit about it's actually it. Actually, the description. Uh, Big shout out to Newton over there at SLF. Yeah, in your own words, Cascades. Newton. What is SLF 100? Well, we start with a base of microbes, which we add to several species of grasses that we grow. We then bring in plants from extreme environments for their ability to survive those extremes. Exactly right. And we let it ferment. Like, if for instance, I'll give you an example of what he's talking about in extremes. I went into a pretty good in-depth conversation with Newton about it. And so when he says extremes, he means like out in the middle of the salt flats, there's a plant growing and it's super green. How the hell is it able to uptake all of this stuff? Well, somewhere in there, it has a, some sort of ability that's hidden within the plant itself and we want to pull that out and make mm -hmm. that available to other plants or a plant that's for say like in the uh extremes of the the rainforest and not getting pm a very resilient plant so we want to pull that out as well so exactly. that's what he means by like extremes. he's saying where that salt flat plant actually goes in it keeps saying and then we bring in plants from extreme environments for their ability to survive those extremes and we let it ferment most of these plants we bring in are proprietary but one plant comes from a salt flat for those plants' ability to survive high ECs. <clears throat> Excuse me. From this Dabs. plant, we get bacteria like Virgibacillus pantothus. I can't. Pantothenticus. That's a hard one. Which is known to help plants survive PhD osmotic me. stress and produce enzymes necessary to remedy high salt environments. Wow. So this so, stuff is like scientifically designed. Shit's legit. It works great. <clears throat> You can use it for flush, like he's saying. You can use it. Use it while you're feeding with I use your it every nutrients time. to help. I use it every single use time. Use those nutrients and break them up. Yep. It. What it. I. I look at it like this. It's like, it goes in with the new nutrients to help clean out the old nutrients, push those old ones out, all exactly. fresh, all fresh new newts for your plant. You're not. It's not feeding on old, all old nutrients. It's not feeding on a bunch of crap that's been built up. And it causes you overall to be able to feed more, in my opinion. Um, when I'm normally feeding uh, without this, what will happen is, is by the end of the week on a, a continuous feed schedule, I feed with uh, Floraflex top feeds a couple of times a day. And so by the end of a week or a week and a half, my PPMs on my runoff start to drift up. And that's because of buildup of salts. And that's without running this stuff. When I run this stuff, I can continue to feed all the time. And my PPMs hardly ever drift up. So I'm the one that controls it. It gives me better control over my feeding regimen. It gives me better control over what's left in the pot. No salt buildup. And then when I'm ready for flush, I don't have to worry about all that stuff. I just come in with this at a higher dosage. I believe 15 mils a gallon is what they recommend for flush. And I'll use that for the first week to get my PPM super low, and then I'll come in with some nice RO clean water and clean it up, really, really flush it out. And, uh, man, you just end up with a, a way better overall product. 100% organic, too. M OMRI rated, all that good stuff. Don't be afraid of it. Clean green rated, too. Also has uh, Bacillus thuringius in it, a fun bacteria I found out the other day, which gets rid of fungus gnats. So it's got even it eats a, larvae. an it's added bonus. Not only bonus. fungus gnats. Yeah, and they're larvae. It gets rid of their larvae in the, in the actual uh, media, so very good stuff. I'd say to uh, use this stuff if you're not already. Put it in your regimen. I will say it works, and it has some in there, but don't think of using it. Don't think that you're going to put it in and use it as a, uh, as a pesticide type of situation, though. No. Yeah. In my opinion, it doesn't have enough in there to kill them all. Well, if you but you have def nothing, though, it's a good preventive it's definitely maintenance a good, type of thing. Yeah, an IPM, preventative maintenance, It's if you use it for that, it works great. I'm going to go dab it in on some of the here. That's so, probably my favorite. 
Flusher. I know you got a few others that yeah, you're going to so want to talk let's, about after I'll, you, you know, take let's, that fatty over there. Let's talk about that one more little bit about that. So this type of flush system is an enzymatic cleansing process. It uses enzymes to help break down those buildup salt of salts, and it's not using a, a chemical-based uh, breakdown method. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's another method that uses a lot of citric-based um, uh, citric based acid to help break down the salt buildups. And that works, too. Um, what are you I, dabbing over there? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm sitting, I'm dabbing on some sauce over here, a little, little bear sauce. Shout out to the bear. Thank little you. little vitamin C there. A little present from the bear. So, yeah. Citric acid base flush. Let me grab one here. All right. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see. I don't, I'm not 100% sure that Floor Clean is, but there's a few products out here like this. Clearex. Uh, just read the directions there and I'll give you the basics. Directions for use. Mix two teaspoons of Clearex per gallon of water. Use Clearex with pure water only. Mix well and adjust pH for reason. Recirculating hydroponic systems between nutrient changes. Drain so that, all existing. Do, 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 do. that would be to clean out your nutrient, I mean your hydro system. Then you can use it as others, so, soil based. For container gardeners, there's uh, between nutrient changes. Drench thoroughly with Clearex solution until there's 20 to 40 percent runoff from the bottom of the pot. Or there's pre-harvest. Drench daily until 10 to 20 percent runoff is achieved from the container. Begin running the solution during the last three to seven days before harvest, during the ripening phase. I might even run this even a little more than three to seven, depending. What I like to do is I like to run it about on on like twelve or thirteen days before. That's what I was gonna say. They always really like all these nutrient companies to push their nutrients until like the last they two want days, to, and then use their yeah. flushing stuff. Just yeah. a lot of the nutrient, and I, you know why they, they you know why I'm, well that and there's another reason. So you can flush a plant out and take away from the, the end product mm -hmm. too much. And how that happens is is <clears throat> if you take all the nutrients away, the micronutrients and everything, the, the, the plant will be, begin to cannibalize. So you have to leave a little bit oh, of magnesium and stuff like that. I've, is there any magnesium in let's, that? Let's check it out. Does it contain magnesium? I bet there's probably trace elements or magnesium or something in That's, there. That's... Point zero point four percent citric acid, That's a, and then the ninety nine point six in their ingredients. Yeah. Otherwise, water. Well, here's water. another product. They'll give you an example. Let's talk about the, you know, the flushing too much out, cannibalizing the plant. Sometimes people believe that the resins or the the sugars get sh kind of sucked back in, and it takes away from the overall end product. So. The theory behind that is, is if you leave a little bit of magnesium or nutrients in there, I know the Emerald Harvest has a system like this on their flush, or they use one mill a gallon on their flush. It's to try to keep the plant from uh, cannibalizing. And what that does is that just keeps the plant from sucking it back in. But in my honest opinion, and this is just me, this is not everybody, but I would rather have an overall product that tastes better and is cleaner and... Um, has even cannibalized and gone to the point to where I know it's flushed out. Their theory is, is as long as you're feeding clean, uh, you're, you continue to use something like this or something like this to break up the salts as you're going through your nutrient feeding process on a normal basis. If you can see both of those products, including this one, they have a list of stuff that you can do uh, as a reg as a regiment as you're feeding, you know, like we were talking, to keep your PPM build up down, keep your salt build up down. So in that theory, it's much easier and much quicker of a process that you can flush out in 10 days or so. Um, personally, I've never been able to flush anything out to my standards in 10 days, except for like RDWC. Mm -hmm. In RDWC, you can definitely flush it out because you have different. complete control over what the what is in that medium per se so with rdwc you can just totally say here i'm gonna flip the switch boom all of a sudden no nutrients available to the plant 
it's forced to flush itself out. When you're in cocoa, it holds a lot of salts. When you're in any other kind of medias like potting soils, dirts, peats, anything heavy like that, you're gonna run into the same situation. So it requires, in my opinion, sometimes usually two weeks to properly flush everything out. And in order to do that, to speed up the process, using these products will help a whole lot, especially the enzymes to try to clean everything up. The citric base flush will help break all the stuff up a little bit less naturally, but it does work. The flawless finish has the um, magnesium in there with the theory of we don't want you to cannibalize your plant. And the flawless finish works a little bit different too. They want you to run it for a longer amount of time. I, the way that works is some, it reshapes the molecule to where it swells it up to the plants not available. So it basically forces the plant to be unable to uptake any of the nutrients or something from my understanding. I, I, you'd have to ask Kevin. He knows a lot more about it than I do. But from my understanding, that's it kind of works in a chemical way. Most of these other ones work in a citric acid base, just break down flush, or an enzymatic based attack flush. So either way... If you're not flushing your stuff, you should try it. You should definitely start. You know, overall, you're going to get up a better product in the end, better flavor, better terpene profiles are going to be available to you. It's not going to be covered up by all those perfumey salt flavors and the nutrients that are left over in the cannabis in the end result. So that's what I would do. I would flush my shit out. Flush the shit out of it. That's right. So let's see. Now let's talk a little bit about how I flush and how you flush. Okay. And what I do is I will run, like I said, SLF 100 almost all the way through at around five mils a gallon usually, two and a half to five, depending on. And then at the end flush, I'll run it at the 15 mils a gallon initially. And I'll run it all the way, like maybe the first week, first two or three feedings, you know, till I get that PPM runoff way down there. And then I'll switch over to just RO water. So, and that usually always ends up, I usually get faded like the first week. The plants will go deficient after the first week usually. And that's a good sign that you're doing what, something correct to make them not have any nutrients available to them so that they can be flushed out. Mm -hmm. Baked. I like that version. Yeah. yeah very, very smart, sophisticated Eric Weed over here today. Get very. schooling. Give me class. Oh, class is in session. Oh, oh man, he's yeah, tipped over the, <laughs> the rig into the de into the Whoopsie. sauce. Whoopsie! will just take a little sauce dab there. <laughs> I need another dab, I think. All right, let's do it. So let's talk about. You know, we're not going to go super deep into the other stuff, but let's talk about some ways that you can fuck up after you dry and cure, or after you get your weed flushed. Let it dry too quick, too soon. Try That's the number one right there. Yep. I, I had that happen to me personal experience. One of my first semi-successful grows. Finally, I got these nice big donks. But then the humidity when I went to go dry was so low, and I didn't know you wanted to really squeeze out the time. You know, you want days, you want weeks, if you can. As long as you can get it to dry, right? And I got to, like, Without. day two or three, and that shit was already fucking crispy. And I was like, wow, it dried quick. I'm going to be able to smoke this real fast. Yeah. <laughs> all that fucking that whole harvest was just hay smelling like you go out to the fucking Palmer hay flats and get a big old whiff and that's what every fucking bud smelled how like did you, how horrible. did you dry it out I just let it hang in, uh, in my basement which has like 15% humidity and then I've learned since then you definitely want to add a little bit of humidity if it's that low and you want to get at least a week man at least a week very true. Um, so a little tip that over a few years and attempts of drying and curing and stuff, I like to dry. So let's say, okay, you're going to destroy terpenes from anywhere from like seven in the 70s, you know what I mean, and above. So keeping it cool and dark when you're drying it mm -hmm. is ideal. Personally, I like 60 degrees. In the dark at 60% humidity, yeah. and that's what I shoot for. It's up there. And I shoot for a 10-day dry. You know what I mean? I expect it to take at least 10 days, mm -hmm. hopefully. 
If it's less, then I probably fucked up somewhere. But what I usually do is I'll put in a, uh, like one of those little, a baby humidifier. Yeah. I'll put one of those in the room. Good, good investment. And I'll run that on a, um, well, I mean, I have a humidity, a temperature humidity sensor. They're pretty easy to get. You can get them at your local grow shop. You can plug a humidifier into that. You can plug a dehumidifier into that and you can set it and it'll automatically turn it on one or the other. It's not that expensive and it's really worth it in the long runs. You can pick one up for less than you can get an ounce of weed on the black market for most states. Mm -hmm. So, you know, overall, if you're trying to get quality cannabis, that's going to be the biggest thing for you to try to do. 60-60 in the dark, 10 days. That's what Eric Weed says. Yeah, like, so if you're new, really try to have all your rooms dialed in, even your curing hanging room, because every little step along the way is important, and you don't want to spend all this time and money to fuck up at the very end on something so simple like this. Just keep all that in mind. Right, exactly. And it's not like it's uh, with cr- curing and drying. Well, I should just say drying, but in, in itself... Your drying process should be partially part of your curing process. And it doesn't matter if you wet trim or dry trim at this point. Um, So, like I said, 60-60 in the dark, 10 days. Very important. It should be really easy to control that way easier than it is or was to control your grow room. Because your grow room is going to have variables, day temps, night temps in the area around it, temperature of your lights. All that shit is involved. So... It should be much easier for you to control this one area. Uh, another tip I would say, try not, unless you're going to cut down and you're going to hang in the same area you grow in and shut down your grow, try not to dry in the same area you grow in because it's going to be a higher temperature. The temperatures that the plants like to grow in is not the same temperature that the cannabinoids and the terpenes and all of the essential oils are going to stay viable in. It's going to be one shift lower. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So biggest thing you can do to have a better crop, even if you don't have the best grow, you don't want to ruin it by, even if you have the greatest grow, you don't want to ruin it by just totally, like he said, not knowing and, and drying it in two days. Ten days, a week, Pretty good. Once you overly dry it, it's, it's it's impossible to get that smell back. I mean, you can rehydrate it with hydration packs all you want, but that, that really smell is going to be... And the feel. That too, know. yeah. Yeah, the smell is the biggest thing because, like he said, uh, so terpenes or terpenes in general, they're less oil-based per se. I mean, I don't mean oil-based, but the, the, the viscosity, the the way it's made up it's more of like a water based as to where it eva- is evaporatable thc not so much yes it can but usually it's just going to dry up and turn into something that's still going to have the can the thc in it terpenes the flavors they go away so the last thing you want to do is have a bunch of strawberry and bananas growing in your room <laughs> for three months and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you open up a week later your buds that you dried that you've been dreaming of for three months and the worst smells like uncle uncle johnny's hay hay field <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's not what you want no i'm telling you where did my strawberries and bananas go they yeah. were there somewhere because you smelled them before right mm-hmm. you know where they went going in your... they just went <sighs> and then <laughs> <laughs> I swear there were strawberries and bananas on this, bro. Oh, man, the worst. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. So, big thing. Time. Effort. Don't sleep. Don't fuck up. Don't do don't, it. Don't let it. Don't let that last little bit of uh, the ending get to you. Don't get too anxious. Don't, yeah. That's where a lot of people mess it up. That's the biggest point, and the end is where it's at. Time you put in there. Personally... Ask this guy. I won't. I won't do anything. I'll let mine dry like two weeks. It takes forever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm still at a uh, 57 percent humidity. No, yeah, that's a good thing we didn't talk about. When should you stop drying, right? 
So usually when you have your room set at 60%, it's going to drift, you know. So the humidity, the, the dehumidifier or the humidifier is going to turn on one or the other. For me, when I look and I don't have to either empty the dehumidifier or add water to my humidifier and I'm not doing anything, I pretty much know where it's at. And then another thing I'll check is the small stems that are about the size of a toothpick, about that size right there. Not to where they break off, but where to, they just snap. Not like that. Not a, <laughs> not a flimsy dimsy. Flimsy dimsy over there. You want a nice snap so that those are dry, about the size of a toothpick. And then you can put them all in a, depending on how much you got, a jar, a tub, whatever you're going to do. Turkey uh, bag. Turkey bags, ostrich bags, whatever you need. And then uh, let them kind of all come back to the same humidity. Um, at your local grow shop, I'm sure you can pick up uh, a good tip is they sell humidity, uh, temp humidity temperature sensors. Mm -hmm. They're like just little ones that go inside your uh, a grow dome like you put clones in. You stick them on them, but those fit really well in a bag. And you can see them through the bag or the tub or whatever. Throw one of those in there. What I would suggest you not do, take this from my personal experience, and it has recently happened to me, uh, and I would like to be able to share this with you so this doesn't happen to you. Bovitas and Integra bags, for what they're worth, they are very good for keeping the moisture in your cannabis. Very, They're very awesome. But... When you store cannabis with them in there, they will absorb the terpenes, in my opinion. Mm. This is my opinion. I can't wait. No, there's no facts on it, but I've tried. I'm going to try it side by side this time. I'm going to take a jar, you know, good two-gallon jar, put one in there. Now, mind you, I'm going to dry this to this perfect humidity. I'm going to get it all around 60 Put it in a jar, put my sensor in there, check it. If it gets above 65, I'll open that for like maybe 10 minutes a day and burp the jar until I get back to my personal preferences around uh, 57 to 60. So when I get in there, then I'll just seal it up. And uh, that's what I used to do, put it, in, put it in a dark spot in a box or in a freezer or something. But um, now what I have been doing for... You know, for a couple of years now, is using the Bovita packs, mm -hmm. and I think that it pulls a little bit of the flavor away once I pull it off the shelf and I pull it out. It seems like a lot more flavor is gone than it should be. I open it up, you get an initial smell, but once that smell's gone, it's like a lot of the terpenes and stuff have been absorbed into the Bovita pack. So very interesting. They work great to fix an, an error. Like if you have a dry, too dry of something or uh, for longevity. But in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of the Bovita pack. So I wouldn't put the Bovita packs in to your jars in your initial uh, dry, after your initial dry until maybe it was very much you had to do it situation. If you didn't have a, a place to put it in, you know, mm -hmm. just a personal experience. All right, well, very good information to Mr. Eric Weed. I'm going to start having to wrap this up, unfortunately, oh, man. you guys. Durbin it up. We do have a contest going on the previous podcast. Go ahead and check that out, and uh, we'd still have, we'll give another week there before I pick a number. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, sucks to be you, but if you do know what I'm talking about, go check it out. Go ahead and uh, give us some suggestions on what you want to see on some upcoming episodes of the Grill Green podcast, please. We yeah. want to know what some questions you have, what you want to see. For sure. Make sure you get up uh, that like button. Hit like. Subscribe, subscribe to us. And uh, pay attention because we're constantly giving away seeds. I know we got some seed packs coming up very shortly. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other good stuff as well. Lots of giveaways coming soon. Stay tuned. Stick around. Grow Green Podcast number 23. I'm number CJ 23. Stone. Eric Queen. Peace. about cannabis, water, culture, plus cultivation, news and entertainment. Never forget to the cute Dalmatian. Grow Green is so amazing.
We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Pro green, put your lighters on my dude. Hash joy, your linen so great. Smoke cannabis every single day. We do massive dabs, not talking about the dance move. Pro green, put your lighters on my dude. Hash joy, you'll get that high grade. Smoke cannabis every single day.